Gamera is perhaps the most well-known non-Toho kaiju. As of now, the giant turtle has gone on to appear in 12 movies, has had multiple comic appearances, shown up in several video games, and has had a ton of merchandise based around him. While Gamera has never reached the phenomenal success his rival Godzilla has, he is still loved by many fans of the kaiju genre, with many eagerly awaiting his return to cinema. But before there was Gamera, there was Nezuda. <laughs> In 1963, Dai Studios wanted to create their own giant monster film in response to the success of Toho's kaiju pictures. Dai had done some special effects movies before, including the recent disaster film at the time titled Wind Velocity 75 Meters, but to do a kaiju movie was a little outside their comfort zone. Aside from doing some minor work with creatures, Dai had never done a full-on kaiju movie in the style of Godzilla. It would be a challenge for the company, but it would also become more of a headache than what the studio would have hoped for, becoming one of the most infamous production tales in the kaiju genre. The movie went under the title Daigunju Nezuda, translated as Giant Horde Beast Nezuda, a movie about giant mutated rats attacking Japan. The idea to use rats came from the recent Alfred Hitchcock film The Birds, a movie about a small American town in California under attack by hundreds of avian creatures. The concept borrowed was to use an everyday small animal and make it threatening in large groups, but with the added terror of it being giant-sized. As for the name Nezura, the first part of it is simply a take on the Japanese word Nezumi, which means rat or mouse. Pretty self-explanatory there. As for the second half, Ra, well, it simply doesn't have a meaning. It's just a common suffix found at the end of most kaiju names, like Gojira or Mosura. The film was planned for a release in December the following year. The story was to be about the development of a high-calorie superfood called S602. After noting it had strange side effects towards humans, the superfood was disapproved and disposed of. Rats began feasting on it and began mutating to over the size of cars. They soon swam their way to Tokyo and began causing terror, led by an even larger rat creature, often titled Mammoth Nezura. The movie was to be directed by Mitsuo Moriyama, with Yon Saboru Tsukichi supervising the effects. Speaking of how Nezura was going to be brought to life, CGI was obviously not an option at the time, so Dai had to look for other ways to bring the giant horde of rats to the big screen. Stop motion animation would have been a good choice, but the art was considered to be both timely and expensive, so it was out of the question. Dai had then planned to use puppets to bring the giant rats to life, but after feeling the effect wouldn't be that convincing, the puppets were replaced with actual rats. And you don't get much real than that. Lab rats were brought in to become the Nezuda, and were let loose upon the miniatures for test shots. Unfortunately, this is where the project began its process to its demise. The rats were too obedient. They wouldn't do a single thing the staff wanted them to do. And half the time, they just wouldn't move at all. Tsukichi and the rest of the staff found themselves in a pickle. The rats were not as active as they had hoped for. So a second plan was put into motion. If they wanted wild rats, then they would need just that. Dai soon after launched a campaign for captured rats and offered 50 yen per rodent. After obtaining enough rats, it was time for the production to go underway. Unfortunately, these rats weren't any better than the lab ones, as they also weren't too active when they were thrown on the set. To get the rats moving, the effects team set up electricity under the miniatures to get the rats scurrying. But just getting them to move became the least of Dai's problems. Soon after, the set was covered in ticks, fleas, and lice. Pesticide had to be used daily to keep the problem in check, and masks also became a requirement just to continue working. Sadly, the bad news didn't stop there. The rats were ruining the miniatures, not in a kaiju destructive way, but in an unhygienic sort of way. With the rodents constantly leaving their fecal matter everywhere and urinating on everything, there was also cannibalism, as the rats began feasting on each other, which was ironic considering that was meant to be something that happened in the actual movie itself. 
some of the rats even managed to escape into the neighborhood Dai was located in. This caused a major uproar with citizens in the area, and the Tokyo Health Department was called in to shut the production down. The entire project was a mess around every corner. The staff working on the movie were unsatisfied with it. Not only was the set a contaminated nightmare to go to, but the rats often bit many of the crew. FX artist Michio Mikami almost had died from a rat-borne tick bite as he developed an allergic reaction from it. Assistant director Shinsuke Kojima shortly left the studio after being disgusted with the production. As the rats were not treated as animals, but almost as interchangeable toys. And once production shut down, the rats were to be exterminated. As for what happened to the mammoth Nezura, well, it's been reported that Ryusaku Takayama had created the suit for the kaiju. There have unfortunately never been any images to show what the monster exactly looked like. It's been said future Gamera director, Noriaki Yuasa, was asked if he wanted to use the suit to become one of Gamera's foes. Yuasa declined the idea. Speaking of him, Noriaki Yuasa had some involvement on the production as well, as he was tasked to make a trailer around the footage that was already shot. Unfortunately, this trailer is now considered lost, as it hasn't shown up since its debut in the 60s. Only a few stills of it are what remain of it today. In 1976, the film The Food of the Gods was released by American International Pictures, which had a similar concept to Nazura, with giant rats played by actual rats causing chaos among the human characters. If you want to know how Nezura would have turned out, this movie might be the closest thing to that. In summer of 2002, the publishing company Katakawa had bought out Daie and creatively formed the name Katakawa Daie Pictures. After doing so, they had started to make new projects of Daie's old special effects movies. As for Nezuda, as soon as the companies merged, any and all existing material of the failed project was to be terminated like the rats used in the picture itself. Ironically around the same year, there was a direct-to-video monster picture called Birth of the Strongest Beast Nezuda, or as it's titled elsewhere, Nezula the Rat Monster. Aside from the similar name, it really has no connection to the Dai project. Many years later in 2015, the independent production company 3Y was formed by Hiroto Yokokawa, who is a sculptor at an art university. The company was known for their effects on commercials and such, but branched out in 2018 with their tokusatsu picture, The Great Buddha Arrival, based on a lost film of the same name. The company then wanted to do another project based on lost tokusatsu media, this time looking at Nezuda. In 2019, a crowdfunding campaign was launched for the project through Makuaki, with the goal of reaching 1 million yen. It managed to surpass that, making over 3 million yen, with a total of 482 backers. Katakawa gave their consensus towards the project, and the production began underway. The movie was titled Nezura 1964, with Hiroto Yokokawa set to direct the picture. Unlike the last movie he worked on, The Great Buddha Arrival, which served as a sequel slash remake to its lost film counterpart, Nezura 1964 was to be a biopic, chronicling the events of the failed project, with some creative choices sprinkled throughout. The movie would feature fictionalized versions of the people who worked on the original production, with all the cast having played some part in tokusatsu media, like Yokijiro Hotoru, who had played Inspector Osako in the Gamma Trilogy, now playing Daiei CEO Yuichi Nagano. Mak Fumiyaki, who had played Kirara in Gamera Super Monster, now plays the role of the lead protester. And Yoshiro Yuchida, who had played Toshio in the first Gamera film many years ago, now plays the monster modeler Takiyama, with a little nod to his past character snuck in the film. On December 19, 2020, the film premiered in Japan with a startling runtime of only 54 minutes. 46 if you dismiss the credits. Despite the short time frame, how is the movie in general? Well, let's find out. The plot of the film is about the movie studio Daie, who wants to make a monster picture to compete with their competitors, as they simply put it. The staff soon follow through with that by making a movie about giant rats, and failing on that project because of the use of real rats, which came with so many problems of their own. 
thus canceling the production. Yes, it's pretty much everything, or mostly everything, that I told you in the beginning of this video. There are some things left out, like most of the animal cruelty moments, or the staff at Daie enraged over the project's horrible working conditions. You see a bit of that in the film, but it's rather tame. Unlike how the rats were in the original project, these ones actually did what they needed to do. Nothing. The rats here aren't wild sewer rats like in the original. They were actually brought in by a breeder, and apparently they were all well behaved. I have to say the movie does manage to recreate faithfully a lot of moments from just still pictures alone. Especially the actual filming of the rats. It's really cool to see how this movie would have been played out in motion if it had gone through to the end. Since there are no pictures of the mammoth Nezura, the one in this film had to be created from scratch, and the final outcome does not disappoint. It's a really cool looking creature. It's just a shame it hardly appears in the movie itself. Hell, I think you see more of Godzilla's toes in the 2014 movie than you do of this thing. Another small complaint I have is that I wish the movie would have been shot on film as opposed to digital. The movie half the time is being shot like a documentary, as if it were being done in 1963. However, the footage looks way too clean, and takes me out of the feeling that I'm supposed to be watching a documentary filmed in the early 60s. Aside from those little gripes, I think it's a very well-made indie film, and I love all the Nezuva themes in the opening and ending credits. They're pretty catchy, and there's a chance you might end up humming some of these if you plan on watching this. It's not a perfect movie. There are some bits that could have been spliced out in favor of enhancing the story a little better, but it's a fine little biopic that is worth checking out if you're interested to see how the failed production got its start with the rats to its eventual evolution to a giant turtle. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. After Giant Horde Beast Nezuo was cancelled, Daie didn't give in in making a kaiju picture, which led them to creating Gamora, a creature that actually rivaled Toho's Godzilla, and a kaiju that still gets recognized even to this day. Let's go, Gamera! Hirohito Gamera! Hirohito Gamera! Hirohito Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Sushi and beef. Carbon. Carbon.